O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Good evening and God bless you. This is your brother Bishop Scott greeting you on this Wednesday evening as you have set aside the time to delve into the word of God that you might stimulate and activate your zeal for God in greater graces and with greater effect. It is indeed a very kairos season. We are living in moments of history that we have never seen before and we will never see the like of it again, I believe. I am certain, based on the preponderance of happenings in our world, that we are nearer the rapture than we have ever been before, not just as a chronological experience, but as a spiritual experience. We are seeing so many things coming into alignment. And we are children of the Most High God, and as we are in the mode of preparation and readiness and anticipating the glorious dawn of the new day for us, the believers, amen, we are brought face to face with the realities of the kingdom of heaven that we must ensure that we walk in at a very high level of perfection. The Lord is on his way back. And so at this time, it should be upon our hearts to bear witness of Jesus more than anything else. Indeed, and in fact, we are in a season of uh, tremendous edification in the body of Christ, uh, where we are growing up in spiritual graces and we are experiencing the word of God. And there are many movements of uh, greater prayer and, and greater ministry uh, within the context of the churches and the assemblies and the various digital platforms. But we must also never lose sight of the fact that one of our primary objectives here as children of God is to testify of Jesus, is to win the lost, is to let our brothers, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, our instructors, all our connections among humans in this world know that there is a God, that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain, that there is a greater purpose to our human existence than having... Uh, uh, a great life, so to speak, and attaining and achieving uh, many secular things. We are created to glorify God. We are created to go about and live our lives in a conscious manner. Amen. As the writer of the Ecclesiastics declared to us, Solomon, he says, it is the whole duty of man to fear God and to keep his commandments. We must have this at the forefront of our minds. And as Christians, we should not allow ourselves to become so self-centered that we forget to share the gospel message. If there's ever a time when a truth is most valuable is when the state to which the truth speak to is most profoundly evident. And so... Um, so many lives have been whisked away, amen, by the power of this coronavirus that is upon our globe. Uh, and so it is very, very relevant for us to share with our fellow men that life is brief. Life is very short. Uh, in the morning, we do flourish freshly and bloom. But by evening tide, we are withered and gone. And the places where we once flourished shall know us no more forever. So, my brother, my sister, we must give heed to the instructions of Jesus that we should go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. They were instructed to begin at Jerusalem and they should go to Judea and to Samaria and on to the uttermost parts of the world. We have received that charge and it remains our prerogative to bring it to pass. We must share the message of Jesus Christ. We must testify of our own personal experience as we warn our fellow men, our fellow brethren, our fellow human beings of the things that shall befall them once they die, we need to encourage them that the fullness of life, this side of reality, can only be attained through serving the Lord Jesus and committing one's way to his keep and to his direction. And so I feel led to encourage us tonight to testify of Jesus and to Win the lost, uh, amen, to go share and tell. Uh, so the message, as we know it, is wrapped up and tangled up in love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that 
whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God made us in his image and in his likeness. He created us. Uh, he placed us on this planet and he planted a God into place of our forefathers. He created the world before he put us in it. And he gave dominion unto man. We understand and know through the testimony of the angels to Moses, as is recorded in the Genesis, that man sinned, we fell. And so, even though God made us and even though we fell, his love remains constant. He never changed it. He never altered it based on what we would do or wouldn't do. In fact, everything that we would ever do and all of our actions individually and collectively as human species, God knows them. It is in his purview. He knew them before they ever even came into our thoughts. And yet still he made us. Hallelujah. And yet still he loved us. And yet still he continues to love us and seek for us as he was searching for Adam and Eve in the garden. And he was asking, amen, where art thou? God is still searching. His love is still propelling his actions to us ward, uh, waiting and trusting that we would trust him and believe and receive, right? Whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ should not perish, but should have everlasting life. We need to uh, bring this message to all the folks we know, everybody we meet, amen? We need to tell them of the love of God. Uh, we need to demonstrate unto them the love of God. We need to validate our convictions about the love of God. So we need to bear this message to them, you know, that God loves you and that uh, God chose to give you life, whosoever they are, it doesn't matter, right? We need to share the message that God waits for us to choose him and to accept life now and even in the eternity, we are here to make and to live a choice as human beings. And so we've got to begin to share with our neighbors. You either believe and accept Jesus or you disbelieve and reject Jesus now and then. We are appointed unto death once, which is an inescapable reality for all of us that, is, that are born of a woman. Amen. Which means it's everybody. We are prone to live and we are destined to die. Right, But as Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 says, after the death, there is the judgment. And that is the judgment that none of us want to appear before God and be found guilty. We want not to appear at that judgment. In fact, we want to be uh, with the Lord in the air. And every human being has that privilege through Jesus Christ. Every single person upon this planet that are alive now and that shall live after this, amen, have the opportunity to choose God, to believe him or not to believe him. You see, judgment is going to happen because God says it will. And no matter what we say or no matter what we believe to the contrary, it cannot change what God has designated according to the counsel of his will to happen. So, Whatever you cannot change, you must prepare to meet it, at least to survive it or to endure it. So uh, everyone shall give an account for the deeds done in their body. This is a truth. We cannot escape it. But we need to tell the world of this. We need to tell the world, amen, that the kingdom of God invites you to citizenship, right? God wants to make you a citizen. We need to share that message. We need to tell people that, amen, you are not just coming to a church or to a building or to a group of people. You are coming to the family of God. You are coming into fellowship and relationship with Jesus. So we must have a message and we must know the message. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Why? Why should they not perish? Because they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is able to take away their sins and have already paid the price. As the Bible taught, teaches us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. So the sin that was started and entered in the human race through Adam's error must be washed away. But now Adam isn't alive, right? And so uh, we are not yet in his loins. So if Adam were alive and uh, he was exposed to the blood of Jesus and believed and accepted him, then 
uh, we would uh, we would probably have some universal redemption through the seed being still in Adam. But that's not the case. Uh, the generation and the population of man has gone on. And as a function of that, uh, we as individuals need to answer to God and to receive of him forgiveness and cleansing and sanctification right, by the blood of Jesus. Every man must. The Bible says there was a time of ignorance at which God winks at. You know, God uh, overlooked, so to speak. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. It was uh, true uh, many years ago that the father would eat the sour grape and the children teeth be set on edge as a, as a function of God's law. But the Lord shifted that and brought a more perfect way. For every man uh, that has sinned and everyone that sinned and does err against God, you will have to stand on your own two feet and give an account for your own error. And so every one of us will have to stand and give an account before God. Every man for every deed done in their body. It is so profoundly true. Amen. And so we have to prepare our world and prepare our people for this. Right? And so we need to tell them what you need to do is to repent, repent of your sins, ask God for forgiveness and turn uh, and walk the other way. You have to make your mind up, though. You have to believe that God will forgive you of your sins. First of all, you got to believe that you have sinned. Uh, you got to believe that there is a God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that there is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you as the witness, you must have a firm grip of this in your mind and in your spirit. And of course, we are not alone in our witness. We have the Holy Spirit with us. Christ Jesus himself in spirit form, living, moving, and having his being inside of you. So we have got to uh, speak to the world. Tell them you need to repent. Amen. We know that our witness is not effective without Jesus because, amen, the Holy Spirit uh, convict men of sin and convict men of righteousness. Uh? So the Spirit of the Lord work with us as we witness to the whosoever will, amen, to everyone that we meet. So one must repent, as the Lord told Nicodemus while he walked the earth, that you must be born again. You must be born of the water and you must be born of the Spirit. Amen. Nicodemus begged the question, amen, with another dumb question, so to speak. Shall I enter into my mother's womb a second time and be born again as if to seek for clarity? This man was learned in the scriptures. And yet Jesus says, no, oh, no, 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 no. You must be born of the water and you must be born of the spirit. And so uh, Paul uh, and the other apostles understood this and Peter understood this. And so when the commandment was given by Jesus in Matthew 28, 18 through 19, that uh, they should baptize folks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that he would have commanded them, that Peter obviously understood and received what Jesus said and interpreted it correctly. Then Peter said unto them, Acts 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the baptism, amen, of the Spirit. You must be born of the water and you must be born of the Spirit. So that's the way. That's the way that has been made for us to be saved. The Bible says in Acts 4 and verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. We must realize, brethren, that it is harvest time. And we need to get to telling this world uh, about Jesus Christ. As we uh, change our minds and our paradigms and, and decide, amen, to get up and begin to witness to Jesus, we've got to realize now it's not based on how well we know the scriptures or how grand we can explain things. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And how can you hear except there be a preacher? And how can such an one preach unless they be sent? So we have all been sent. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Every single believer is a preacher. You are to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Not just in the market streets with a powered amp. Amen. Not just on a platform under a tent meeting. Amen. But to do your witness in the sphere of your influence. And talk to the people that you deal with every day. Share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we are all sinners born in sin and shape and in iniquity. Really and truly. Indeed and in fact. Even if you are born in church. 
Amen. Your structure is still under the influence of the Adamic sin nature, which will only be altered when we are translated. Amen. At the rapture in Jesus' name. Right? So you have to believe. This thing, you've got to believe it. You've got to believe that God exists. And we've got to communicate this to people. This world has become so averse to faith and to the things of faith. In fact, uh, in the United States of America, as I speak, there are bills being tended, amen, that would in effect ban the Bible, ban certain phrasing, ban uh, freedom of religion in so many ways and freedom of faith uh, in so many ways, right? Our world is telling us they don't want God, which is why we need to speak of him even the more. Right? Go tell it on the mountain. Amen? Over the hills and everywhere. So, faith is important. So, when we are witnessing to, 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 to those that we are bringing the gospel to, amen, we are seeking for the formation of faith through the word of God. And you don't need to justify and validate everything. You rightly divide the word in the context of Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is the promise from Adam, amen, the process of time, the prophecies, the fulfillment of the prophecies, the life, uh, the times, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his ascension, amen, uh, the arrival of the Holy Spirit, amen, the active life of the Spirit of God inside our vessels and inside our lives, uh, that really is the gospel in a nutshell. Come, amen, be saved. And being saved means you're a part of the family of God. So when we are going after folks and when we are trying to convince them that they need to transform their lives and, and repent of their sins and, and, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ while they still have time, we are seeking for the formation of faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God, he that approaches God, must believe that he is and that he is the ro a rewarder rather of them that diligently seek him. It's not your responsibility to create faith. It's your responsibility to tell the gospel story, to tell about the love of God, to share about uh, what is to come. Amen. The judgments, uh, uh, the fulfillment of prophecies yet uh, unrealized. We are interested in having people's faith come into formation. So, uh, it is harvest time. So as witnesses, we need to make sure that we are convicted. You need to revisit your convictions. What are your convictions like? Are you convinced that there is a hell? Are you convinced that there is life for a look at the crucified one? Are you convinced that if, as you believe in Jesus' name, your sins are taken away and that you shall receive the Holy Ghost? And those uh, who would have gone through that experience, do you still believe? Because there are those that have started, amen, brethren, but they do not continue to the end. As the kingdom of God is likened unto the sower that goes out, amen, and sows, yes? And spreads the seed by broadcast method. And the seed falls on four different types of hearts. Uh, and one of the type of the heart, the seed lodges and it brings forth 30, 60 or 100 fold. The other three uh, don't bring forth any meaningful fruit. There is no fruit recorded there. Right? Which means that you can start in faith believing. Uh, but you need to continue. You see, this race is not to the swift. Neither this battle to the strong, but it is to those that endure to the end, really and truly. That's what it is. It's to those that endure. You know, uh, well beginning is wonderful. Well middle is great. But what we all work for is well done, right? We want to be able to speak like Paul. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. So you want to make sure that you're convicted, brethren. The things of this world, hallelujah, have a way of causing our passions to grow strangely dim. The things of this world have a way of desensitizing us to the, amen, the convictions, hallelujah, and the fervence of spirit as to the soon return of Jesus, as to the finality of God's judgment, hallelujah, as to the reality, amen, of faith in God or not. And so we need to remind ourselves, we need to stir up our gifts, we need to remind ourselves of our most holy faith. Make sure your convictions are ripe and ready and burning and smoldering. If they have waned and have lost their 
Ah, uh, God, luster, pray, talk to the Lord. Amen. Muse on the realities of God. Read the word more. Amen. And ask the Lord to infuse you with even greater conviction. We need as witnesses to know our testimony and have our testimony prepared to share. What is your experience with Jesus? Where were you when he found you? Hallelujah. What were you doing? Mighty God. When Jesus came into your heart, what has been your experience since then? Amen. And so as witnesses, we also must be committed, amen, to the Lord, committed to bear witness, amen. You might not be able to speak on a microphone. You might not be able, amen, to type a wonderful uh, email or Instagram note or something, but you can speak to somebody in the valley of the shadow of death and introduce them to Jesus who is the light and the life and the resurrection and the hope of all who trust in him, amen. And he's the only hope of humanity amen you must be committed to bear that message you must be committed whether they hear you or whether they forbear whether they don't believe or not remember you cannot command them to believe you can implore them amen to believe but you we can never force anyone and the truth is we have to accept it not everyone that we witness to is going to receive in fact uh, we should expect, amen, uh, that it is very likely that most of the people that we speak to and share the gospel will reject it. Why? For broad is the way, uh, the road that leadeth to destruction. P people find it easier to reject God, amen. For how should I accept this God? I can't touch him, I can't taste him, I can't manipulate him, I can't see him. Hallelujah, I can't quantify him. Yes, that's why it has to be by faith. You either believe or you don't, amen. Uh, and none cometh to the Father except the Spirit of the Lord draws them. So, uh, as witnesses, we also need to prepare ourselves. We need to prepare for this witness. Amen. Maybe you need to brush up on your Christology. You need to brush up on your soteriology. Maybe you need to brush up, amen, uh, on the judgments of God. Maybe you need to brush up on the will of God. Maybe you need to brush up on uh, the doctrine of sin. Amen. And all of that stuff. Hallelujah. And the need for salvation. But we need to prepare ourselves. You need to prepare yourselves for greater weakness. Amen. And you need to uh, develop an approach that will be effective. Uh, amen. You, you know, uh, to each person, a different approach might be relevant. And so as witnesses, we need to make it our business to uh, prepare the message such that the folks to whom we are targeting will have the greatest chance of receiving it by faith. And then as witnesses, we need to know that we have support. You have people around you. You have those that have been doing it for years. You have those that have better strategies and, 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 and better methodologies. And you can ask, you can learn. You have people praying you up. Amen. We need to get busy because the harvest fields are white, but the laborers are few. And we need to pray, indeed, and in fact, that God will send laborers into the harvest. Amen. But while we are praying that God will send laborers, we must work. While it is day, spreading the love of God and the word of God as we witness along the way, we must be willing to do the will of God, to suffer for the gospel of Christ, to bear reproach, amen, in righteousness, amen, and not in sin, in righteousness for the name and the excellency of the Lord Jesus. Yes, we need to get a grasp as witnesses of our worldview, what's going on in the globe. Everybody know what's going on uh, in terms of virology. Everybody knows what's going on in terms of the disease state. We are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Amen. And so we need to have a firm grasp of that reality. It, it, it tells us that our world is fickle and frail. It tells us that at a moment's notice, our world can change and has changed. Amen. And we now in our witness must also understand the personal view. Right. What is the personal state of affairs? You as the witness. Uh, individually what are, what are your affairs like and then the person to whom you're witnessing you need to have a sense of what their affairs are like you know uh, what is going on in their life whether by revelation through the holy spirit or by other meaningful interaction with the individual right we as witnesses need to learn to use our connections the the the, the relationships that have already been established Right? You see this person every day, you talk with them every day, you share with them every day, you have to interact with them every day, yet they're outside of the way of Jesus. You need to find a way to break the gospel to them, amen, and to present Jesus. And we need to learn to take opportunity uh, in crisis situations when people are, amen, at their wit's end, amen. Oh, hallelujah, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come, Jesus is interested in the broken. He's interested in the distraught. He's, distraught. He's interested in the distressed. He's interested in the bound, in the sick. Oh, my God. 
Uh, those that are in calamities, he is interested in them. He wants to show himself as the Savior, as their Savior. Uh, and he only asks that we, they open the door and say, Lord, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen. So we need to know as witnesses that Jesus is relevant now and he's forever relevant. I don't care what the world looks like. It doesn't matter what the world looks like nor will ever look like. Jesus is real. Oh God. Regardless of what men will be allowed to do, Jesus will remain real. And in broad strokes and in principle, there is nothing that is hid from us in terms of the prophetic declarations of God through the mouth of his servants. We know in broad strokes what this world is going to look like in, in a couple of years. We know what this world is going to look like, amen, towards the days and in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So we must know that Jesus, the same Jesus, that was relevant, amen, in Acts chapter 2, is the same Jesus that's relevant right now. And so we need to prepare ourselves as witnesses, brother. We've got to get up off our laurels. We've got to get off of our complacency and stop worrying and fretting and, and star gazing and situation gazing. Let's get back, oh God Almighty, to the center of it all and share the witness, amen. Uh, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name and be full of the Holy Spirit. And so you should be. And if you're not, get to it. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth not. Amen. He's already damned. Damned why? For you believe not. Amen. On the Son of God himself. Right? We are gifted with the Holy Spirit. The Lord has already prepared you. So long as you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit. You're prepared for unto every good work. From the spirit zone. For the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth. Will teach you things that you don't know. God will bring these things back to our memory. And so we have all the help we need. As First Peter uh, 1 verse 3 uh, declares, I believe, He is divine power, hath given us everything for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us unto glory and virtue. His divine power hath given us everything we need to live and everything we need to operate in godliness. So we have no lack. Right? And the Lord has commissioned us. And we know the power of Jesus' word. When Peter, amen, that fitful night upon the sea, asked him if it be you, Lord, bid me come. When Jesus said come, Peter stepped out on that word and went. And when he took his mind off the Jesus to whom he was going, amen, and began to pay attention to the bolsterous sea around him, amen, then was when he lost his footing. So when we uh, go... Based on what Jesus has said, he says, go into all the world. He has told us to go. So we now go. We go. Amen. We need to realize that we are empowered to bear witness through the mouth and the declarations of Jesus. We must prepare ourselves by being students of the word. Amen. Read it. Meditate on it. Study it. Understand it. Apply it. Amen. Prove it. Walk in it in Jesus' name. And also in prayer and in fasting. We need to pray. We need to pray for the lost souls. We need to intercede on the behalf of those that we are telling you need to change your life. Uh, you need to turn around before uh, time changes for eternity or you shift from time to eternity via death. Amen. We need to pray. Oh, hallelujah. And ask uh, for the release of their souls. Pray that the God of this world would not be able to blind their eyes. Pray that the light of Jesus will penetrate the gross darkness over their head. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This has to deal with the sinner who has never known God, and this has to do with those who have been baptized and filled with Jesus uh, and find themselves erring. God is long-suffering because he does not want anybody to perish. He would that none would have perished. Hallelujah. But that all would come to repentance. So we, go, we need to go find those husbands, children, wives, friends, co-workers and let them know God is waiting for you. Hallelujah, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling you, calling you from a life of ignorance, calling you from a life of indifference towards his almighty power. Hallelujah, calling you to come and know him in the realm where only faith can carry you. Oh God, we need to realize that we are on a rescue mission for these souls. We need to understand, amen, that we need to target them. We need to look into all the world. 
Amen. And all the world is really, really big. But where I am is small enough. Where I go for food. Where I go uh, to buy my supplies to do my daily activity. Amen. Where I come home to is a small enough world. Wherever is my sphere of influence, we need to target them. We need to hunt for the lost. Look for the bound. Seek out the captive. Amen. Track down the sinners in our world. Oh, shut up. Glory to God. Every one of us right everyone you know everyone you meet everyone you interact with everyone that you can reach amen we need to find them brethren they are around us we don't need to look far start in your own home start at your feet start where you are standing tell them man you need to change your life you need to give jesus what's left of your life for indeed and in fact there is a day coming of reckoning indeed and in fact there's a day coming when you're going to die amen there's a day coming when you're going to cease to be here there's a day coming of judgment man and you don't want to wake up before god unprepared to meet him and look why should you so do when he has made every preparation for you to bask in life now you have some tribulations yes you'll have some trials you can't escape that for he that will live godly or righteously must suffer persecution in this life not in the next to come there's no persecution hallelujah beyond the rapture there is no persecution oh glory to god beyond death for them that believe in jesus name how long do you do this my god until somebody offends you in church no how long do you do this until it's no longer amen the thing that i have to do no how long do you do this until i find something else to do in my time and with this world no you do it until death or until rapture until you're translated always bear upon your lips the message of jesus christ turn my brother god loves you jesus doesn't want you to perish repent of your sins you know you have sinned hallelujah for indeed the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and so we need to amen get back up to the full measure of the glory of god and the only way to do this is through jesus christ our lord we need to tell them there's a kingdom prepared for you you need to let men know that you're designed to be rulers you have been selected by god to be trained hallelujah to reign with him for a thousand years and ere eh, my god to spend eternity with him as god with his children amen how long do we need to bear witness until the end of the age for as long as time is we need to bear witness of jesus and we need to bear witness of the kingdom of god which is at hand so to help us in this exercise and to help us in this preparation, brethren, we need to consider a few things, you know, in your daily life as you go about, you know, expand your mind along these lines, you know, uh, expand your mind amongst uh, uh, the lines of considering the nature of man, you know, that we are divinely designed, amen, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we are, we are mesmerizing on a microscopic level, we are, my God, awe striking amen in so many ways based on how we have been made we are spirit soul bodies you know we have got intellect and so on and so on amen my god our days are few amen life is filled with this contemplate those things the nature of man the nature of sin uh, contemplate this in sin amen is like a disease so to speak sin is in our body there's a law of sin that is in our body that will not be totally destroyed until translation until we are raptured until we shift from time to eternity god has just allowed it to be so the body must die it must go back to be reset think about the righteousness of god in terms of the attributes of god the love of god the justice of god the mercy of god the long suffering of god the temperance of god his omniscience amen his justice oh hallelujah Oh my God, just contemplate the righteousness of God via his attributes. Uh, we bear it in mind, the mercy of God, the goodness, the severity. Think on the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's Emmanuel, God made flesh. Amen. And dwelt among us. Amen. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. You're getting ready to speak to people that are touched, that are wounded, that are affected, that are tempted and tested and tried and, and are filled with failure and filled with questions and filled with uncertainties. So you've got to let the Holy Spirit enlarge in your capacity to understand their world and to be better able to present jesus in a meaningful and a relevant way to them you gotta think about time and eternity to be an effective witness you gotta think about time amen time waits for no man you gotta think about time hallelujah to tell people the truth amen you know not when you're gonna die you know uh, with reasonable certainty when you were born amen you know that you are alive but you don't know how long and you use these things to 
bring people's mind to focus on the truth like Solomon did in the Ecclesiastics, contemplating every branch of human endeavor and human understanding and, uh, and natural law that uh, was revealed to him. And Solomon thought about these things very deeply and very heavily. And the man had to come to one prevaricating conclusion. Yeah, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Is not to uh, overindulge in, in amenities and in provisions and in delicacies and in pleasures and in power and in blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. It is to fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. So we too must uh, endeavor to be contemplative in our way, to think on these things. Uh, as the Apostle Paul spoke to Timothy, give attendance to reading, you know, to prayer, to fasting. Uh, amen. That you might build up yourself to be effective uh, in the duty to which God has called you. We need to think about choice. We do have a choice. Whosoever believeth. Uh, God cannot have made such a statement if we did not have the capacity to believe. He whosoever believeth should not perish but have eternal life. We have a choice. You either believe or you don't. That's your choice. You choose to believe God or you choose not to believe God. And that's the choice you have to make at the very fundamental level. You are choosing reward or punishment. My God, but we got to get out there. But you shall receive power. Acts 1.8, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, my God, in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. We have been given power to go and be witnesses. So we need to prepare ourselves for that. And so here are a few ideas to start conversations, you know. It's very powerful to witness to people uh, where they are comfortable. Talk about things that they can jibe with, things that they can you know, identify with, uh, you know, the witness of Jesus don't need to be superfluous. You don't need to be, you know, all grandiloquent and, you know, verbose and all of that. Uh, for God appears to man in the rudiments of his life. Oh, the invisible things of him are from the creation of the world. Clearly seen, Romans 1, 20. Huh? God is apprehendable through nature. Man perceives God in his world. So we are really helped already by the natural world, by God's design of things. Amen. They speak to our faith element, the capacity of man to believe and to accept the reality of God. Uh, God has given us enough uh, upon which we can stand and stretch into faith, believing and accepting as true the realities that has been revealed to us by faith in Jesus' name. So... We need to talk about time, talk about eternity, talk about the brevity of life, you know. Life after death, nice conversation starter. Talk about the pandemic, you know. Talk about the climate, the weather, society, whatever works, whatever gives you an in-world. The stock market, money and power, creation, God, your faith, your convictions, good start point. Your personal experiences and expectations, huh? your own disaster preparedness, novel ways of presenting Jesus. Talk about the power and inevitability of choice. Yeah? A great conversational piece is to start this thing. We need to tell it. We need to tell it wherever we go. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is and that Jesus is. Everybody ought to know that the king is coming to. It's not only uh, just uh, getting rid of sin, but it's preparing to be a part of something greater than this side of eternity, greater than the reality that we have experienced right now. So it's time to start the dialogue. Start the dialogue with your friends, with your family, with your co-workers. Talk about Jesus in a positive way. Don't talk about church. Talk about Jesus. Talk about God. Talk about your own experience. Uh, get out of negativism and gossip and hearsay and, 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 you know, politics that tend to nothing but strife and idiosyncrasies. Huh? Start the dialogue about Jesus. Man, are you all right? What if you should die today? Is everything good with you? Why are you prepared to meet your God? And if not, what do you think you need to do? Oh, I, I know. I know what you need to do and so on and so forth. But we need to start the dialogue. We need to get passionate about the gospel. Uh, we need to understand that salvation is for whosoever will. We need to understand that we need to live, amen, a life directed by the will and the power of God. We need to be purpose-driven. We are designed to be purpose-driven. And the only way to find your purpose is to have fellowship with God. As Adam had fellowship with God in the Garden of Eden, mighty God before the fall, we also need to have that fellowship with God. It's God's design. It's how he has set things up. 
We need to get people to think in terms of time and eternity. We need to get a good grip of signs of the powers of this world. We need to have a great, strong understanding of the events of times, uh, eschatology, amen, and, and deal with end things and deal with prophecy. We need to understand prophecy to, to help us to be better witnesses. We, we need to understand that we are just voices crying out in the wilderness of time. Hallelujah. And we cannot convince all, but there are a few. There are some that will listen and will stretch out and believe in the God that we are presenting. So we need to seek for the harvest, brethren. I encourage us, every one of us, pray that God would send more laborers. We need to preach in terms of the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, we need to present Jesus as the God for all seasons. And these are just ideas to help us. Amen. In our witness, we need to present Jesus as the only way, not just as one of the ways. Jesus is the only way. Oh, he says, no man cometh unto the father, but by me. Yeah. I am the way, not a way. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. We need to pray earnestly for the lost souls. Uh, and we are not just praying here and scaremly and just randomly. Amen. And blindly. You know people. You see them every day. God, I'm praying for the lady that I, I buy the coffee from every morning. Lord, her name is Sheena. I am praying for Gamaliel. I'm praying for Gabriel. I'm praying for, you know, Samantha, uh, Cynthia. Lord, I'm praying for, I don't know, Zeb. Amen. Pray for the people that you see, that you know, that you have tried to witness to, that you are witnessing to. Call them by their names if you know. Seek out the lost deliberately. And, and we need to be encouraged to persist in our witness in prayerfulness and faith witness to people believing that they will accept witness to people with a determination that they will come to understand and they will come to accept jesus always abide in the word rightly divide the word know the word know what to present to these folks and be ready to share your testimony there's nothing more potent amen than your own real life testimony i was a wanderer i was an addict i was i was amen a clairvoyant i was mixed up in the underworld i i was a thief i i was uh, sexually perverted i i i was involved blah 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 give your testimony share amen where you found jesus or rather where jesus found you Amen. Be willing to share your experience. Oh, I accepted the Lord when I was nine and blah, blah, blah. I accepted the Lord when I was 19. I accepted the Lord. I was in the middle of a gang. Blah, blah, blah. I was guilty of murder. Amen. I was guilty of this. I was sh be willing, brethren, to share your testimony. Somebody would like to hear of your experience. Amen. You see, but beloved, we need to build up ourselves in this time in our most holy faith. We need to pray much in the Holy Spirit. We need to keep ourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You are never so saved that you don't need the mercy of God. And the mercy of God will keep you walking by grace through faith. Such that you don't live in failure. And you don't serve sin in your flesh and be subjective to the ligates uh, of sin. And the motions of sin in your flesh. But it is the mercies of God why you are able to overcome. It is the mercies of God why you are able to live victoriously and cleanly and holy and separated unto God. And it is the mercies of God why you are able to wheel the powers of the world to come through the unction of the Holy Spirit. But Jude goes on in verse 22 of the chapter. He says, and on some folks you have compassion. There are those that it's just compassion that compel you to be a witness to them and to help them in the way. And then there are others, uh, you know, that you have to make a distinction. Some you have compassion and some you save them with fear. You look at the utter depravity of their condition. My God. And you drag them out. Hallelujah. By the will and the power of God for where they are is almost like they're already in hell, if you will. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. There are, there are some people that you got to witness to. They are very, very defiled. They are, they are in the worst part of sin. But they still need to hear the blessed gospel news. They still need to hear Jesus loves you. They still need to know there is a God that made you. And he's interested in your good. He's interested in your positive outcome. 
We need to go tell it, brethren. We need to go share this gospel. We have to rescue the perishing. We have got to care for the dying. There are some poor, fainting, struggling seamen on the sea of life being tossed about and boxed about. Oh, hallelujah. Help us, dear Father, that we will never allow any one of them to be a lost and adrift more longer than they need to. We must brightly beam the Father's mercy from the lighthouse evermore. We must tend to that light within our hearts. And when we are not at the citadel of the light generating, we must have light within ourselves reflecting the glory of Jesus. Rescue the perishing. Find them. There are those that feel they don't need God, but they are dying and don't know it. Find them, reach them, tell them. So we need to strategize and find what works for us, what works for you. You need to make this personal. Uh, will home cell witnessing work for me? What about the workplace? What about Sunday school? Will I be effective there? What about my family gatherings? Can I use those? What about the community outreach? You know, the, the, the programs of helping, of giving food and clothing and shelter and raiment and counsel and medical assistance. Uh, what about digitally? Can I, can I do something to witness to people on my page? Uh, those that I interact with and talk with every day. How do I witness to them and tell them about Jesus in a way that is non offensive and in a way that makes it easiest for them? Uh, uh, do I have a health ministry strategy that I use to witness? Amen. Uh, when you meet people at the point of their need and present Jesus as the need meter, amen, it's easier for them to accept that in truth. And in fact, this God is interested about me and cares about me. Amen. We need to have the strategy. Amen. Praise God. And so as we look to go through the door in this class tonight, as we look to realize that we have been commanded to bear witness, you shall be witnesses of me. Go ye into all the world. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. Amen. It's something that God requires of us. We need to get personal and personalize our witness. We need to find relevant materials. We need to search out the best methods. And we need to know what ministries God has put in us via the Holy Spirit indwelling us. We need to find motivations. Amen. And sustain them that we will continue. We need to measure our success. Quantify our approach. See whether something is working or not. Hallelujah. Do I need to do more of this? Do I need to do less of this? We need to actively engage those we witness. We need to manifest Jesus huh? to them that we seek to convince of his reality. We need to be like the woman at the well. Come see a man that I've experienced the power that is in him. We need to maintain our focus, maintain our zeal, maintain our drive, and maintain our pursuit, and walk in mastery as witnesses of Jesus. It is time, brethren, for us to care for the dying and develop and sustain bowels and mercies. We need to model the Christian life and be effective. Why? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We need to go tell the world without Jesus, you're nothing, you're dead. You are in darkness and gross darkness. And the flames of the fire of lake of fire burning with brimstone waits on you. It's not just hell. Hell ain't the worst thing. Oh, it's a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And oh my God, we need to redeem the times. Huh? We need to watch the dispensational clock and know that the signs of the times are everywhere. We need to be ready for rapture. We need to have our treasures laid up in heaven, brethren. We need to get some stars in our crowns, though. We need to find some souls and be able to bring them to the Lord. We must come rejoicing, bringing in the shields. Amen. We need to tell it, tell it. Wherever you go, Jesus shall soon appear. Oh, Shanda. Tell it. We are created for dominion. Let the world know. Hallelujah. That there is life after death. Every one of us now must remember that we are charged to reach at least one. If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can share this gospel message, amen, with a word or with a song or with a, a kind deed or with an act, hallelujah, then it will be worth it all. We need to testify of Jesus. Do not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. And if you're ashamed to own Jesus right now in your life, he will be ashamed to own you and he won't own you either. Amen. There is no shame in our game. 
Raise the banner high. Open up your mouth and speak amiably about God. When the world doesn't want to hear about Jesus, talk about him. Hallelujah. While your freedom is still looming. Amen. While you still have the chance. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the subway. Go tell it at the taxi stand. Go tell it in the supermarket. Find a way. Oh my God. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper and entreat it to somebody. Somebody needs to hear that Jesus loves them. And the lips to bear such a news is none other than yours and mine. Oh, when the prophet Isaiah in the presence of God, yeah, when the Lord asked, who shall go for us? Who shall we send? The prophet said, here am I, send me. Realizing his own inefficiencies and his own inadequacies. My God, he declared, woe is me. But God enabled him, empowered him, cleaned him up, straightened him out. God will straighten you out and fix you up. Hallelujah. And use you for his service. Go out there. Tell somebody Jesus Christ is king. Tell somebody you got to turn. You got to repent of your sins. Let them know there is no repentance in the grave. For wherever the tree falls, there it lies. Let heaven be proud of you. Put a smile on somebody's face. Give them a chance to enter eternity with Jesus. Until next week, go find somebody and tell them and share the love of God. This is your brother, Bishop Agri Scott, saying good night, good evening. Have a great time. Get ready for the Lord shall soon appear.